expected. There are many times there are problems in the analysis of that. So, uh, so those uh, who want to go in detail about this particular technique, uh, we have nice books. The first book is by Joe Payer. It is a very simple one actually. It is mostly related to the electrochemical um, corrosion. Very, very simple technique. Slightly want to increase your understanding, you go to the next book by uh, Kelly et al. And uh, there I think it is a variety of techniques are there. So fundamentals of electrochemical corrosion also been covered in that book. And if you are very fond of um, you know, electrochemistry, you really want to know more fundamentals of electrochemistry, all technique, both steady state and transient techniques, impedance spectroscopy, etc., even diffusion analysis. I would recommend Bard and Faulkner book, actually. It's a very good book. So depending upon your need, you can choose any of these books. These are, in my view, are very nice books for electrochemical uh, studies. This slide not moving. Some problem in the, yeah. Now, coming to this, um, Let's first of all set some clarity in what we mean by corrosion. I think most of us should be aware of it. But for clarity, I would like to reiterate here that materials degradation in chemical environments is what we define as the corrosion process. The metal can degrade and can fail for various reasons, but failure due to chemical environment is what we define as the corrosion failure. Now, the materials are generally used for two types of applications, I would say, structural application and device applications. Structural, what I mean is mostly load bearing applications. The devices means various types of devices. It could be a process thing it, or it could be a magnetic device, electronic devices. They are not mainly load bearing, but there are different type of functions. In all these cases, we use the metal section. Material scientists and metallurgists, we develop materials having very high performance. You know, we always want to improve the performance of the material by uh, working on compositional microstructure level, even at atomic level, we develop it to get high performance. But as you get this high performance, these materials, you should look at the service life. You have a very good, highly efficient material. At least in the case of metals, we can say that if you develop materials of high structural strength, they are more prone to corrosion, more, more often than not. So it is not necessary that you develop a high performance material that have very high resistance to corrosion. The corrosion sometimes are not the same line as the other uh, characteristic of materials. So it is important to develop materials of high corrosion resistance. If you cannot, you know, I mean, you won't have materials that are immune, but that is not possible at all. If you cannot Developed materials are immune to corrosion, which is not possible. Obviously, we need to predict the service life. How, how long the metal can be repaired. The various techniques are being used, uh, you know, in, in all these aspects, like developing corrosion resistant materials, predicting the life performance. There are various techniques that are being used to do that. Let me now come to the main part, that is, why we are concerned with the corrosion of materials. Let's look at the structural uh, application, the materials, mainly, most of us know, 
that the material that we deal with hot here or just put my pointer here. The material that we deal with generally are like you know based on iron, nickel, copper, maybe titanium, zirconium, aluminum. These are the or sometimes even tantalum. These are the basic structure, the element that we utilize it actually in order to improve the performance. Material scientists add various elements to these basic metals in order to improve the performance. When you add, when you look at all these elements that we deal with, they're all, except of course, platinum, gold, you know, these are of course exceptional material. Other, all, all of them are prone to corrosion, actually. So that is why we are worried about the corrosion. Look at the next kind of, you know, materials which are interested with device applications. The device application, these are the materials that we deal with. Okay. Generally, or deal with that. And if you are like semiconductor or magnetic materials, you deal with this. Again, as you notice, they are all prone to corrosion. So corrosion is a common problem for all of them. Now, when you talk about corrosion, essentially, then people ask the question that why do they really corrode? And again, I am not going to go in details. I just illustrate some, you know, some important points. Suppose I expose steel or Maybe to iron to water, it leads to iron hydroxide and hydrogen revolution. It's a spontaneous reaction. Or you may have water in that you have oxygen content in that, you also have other kind of corrosion taking place. So, in aqueous condition, in aqueous condition, there is a corrosion process. I would underline the term which is called aqueous, that is where we are talking about electrochemistry of corrosion of metals. The corrosion of metals are also has another uh, facet wherein the oxygen can interact with the iron or any metal and form iron oxide. At ambient temperatures, these are very slow kinetics, so normally they occur at high temperatures. We call them as high temperature oxidation or high temperature corrosion process. Now, why are these metals corroding? Basic thing is the thermodynamics, I think, and most of you might have you know learned a lot but i want to give you a kind of review of that the corrosion is again thermodynamics the thermodynamics is is dealt with what is called as a food bed diagram very similar to the phase diagrams that we have for various metals and alloys like a phase diagram the food bed diagram also talks about the stability of the corrosion products actually let me now look at this diagram. This is a very important diagram because anytime we are going to analyze the polarization curves, this diagram is to be seen very closely. Otherwise, you get into wrong interpretation. This this Purbe diagram is you all we know that it is this is what I shown here is for the water, the stability of the water. Now it is related to potential on the on the y-axis and the pH of the water on the X axis. As you notice, the water is stable over a narrow region of potential and the pH is here. And this region, water is stable. If you move away from it, water becomes unstable. Here, what happens? It becomes oxygen there. If you move it down, you find the water, you know, decomposes again, it leads to hydrogen here. Why it's important? Please notice again, go back to the diagram, this equation here. Iron, when it reacts with the water, it liberates hydrogen. Okay, that means the water is unstable. As long as water is stable, the corrosion will not really occur. So that is about thermodynamics. Okay, now let's look at this thing now. So that's where the iron evolution takes place. Okay, now let's look at the engineering metals we just now saw. What are these engineering metals mainly? Iron, aluminum. Can you look at these metals when they put in this aqueous solution that potential we call a corrosion potential you want to call it they lie in this region or even the equilibrium potential i would say that equilibrium potential lie in this region of the Urbe diagram in this region of this actually so when they lie in this diagram in this region they exhibit a potential 
they fall in this and so what happens the water becomes unstable what happens that means liberates hydrogen how does hydrogen liberate it that is by the oxidation of the metal and and the reduction of water leads to hydrogen process so when the metals whose potential lie here in this region then what dynamically they are not very stable and lead to corrosion now suppose i have a metal somewhere here like copper and silver i put it in water now look at this they are not going to corrode at all provided the water does not have oxygen in it suppose i have oxygen in, in this actually what happens this oxygen will combine with water we express on here and forms hydroxide what you see here also same thing right so copper and silver becomes unstable if you have water in this and if you have oxygen in this actually so that becomes unstable so they start corroding but if you remove oxygen in water the corrosion does not take place now if you go to let's say gold it is lying somewhere here so it is not going to corrode at all it's not possible for it, for it to corrode because for gold to corrode it gets oxidized water also get oxidized please look at what is getting reduced here the water is getting oxidized here you can't have two of them get oxidized one should get oxidized or should get reduced so gold will not corrode at all in water of various ph ranges they become stable so the thermodynamics becomes very important to decide what reaction can occur on the metal i am going to come back to this food bed i have a little later to use this to understand how the metal uh, how do you interpret the polarization diagram now if you look at the the for the sake of completion i would like to talk about this this particular equation as well similarly you also have what is called as the ellingham diagram the ellingham diagram talks about the the the, uh, the standard free energy change for this particular reaction versus the temperatures okay as long as the standard free energy change becomes negative the reaction will occur again this is another field of corrosion in fact we have a full course where dandapani is taking this course on this actually we are not going to go in detail in this actually mm -hmm. all i am trying to say is that then what dynamics dictates what kind of reaction it can really happen or what cannot happen in a in a given corrosion systems that has to be kept in mind when it was part interpreting the data and without which you may fail you may wrong, get the wrong conclusions when you are interpreting the polarization curves now yes now thermodynamics says that okay all of them are corroding so in a sense that none of these metals are usable right but in practice we are able to use almost all of them why we are able to use them because a one reason can happen the one reason could be that metal can form a film on the surface and this film prevents or at least retards the corrosion of the metal in the environment here and we call them as oxide film we call them as a passive films so the passive film is what happens so in essence what i am trying to say if you look at the thermodynamics basically i think i think almost all engineering metal that we are talking about are useless the fact that you are using them because of the kinetics they are very slow so essentially what we are doing in all our research is to look at the kinetics how fast how slow they are going if they if were going fast how do we really control it so i want to spend more my, of my time in understanding the kinetics of the dissolution of metals using electrochemical technique that's what i think we are going to do that the one of the other things we go into that you know you know is, you know many of you perhaps if you look at the emf series you know you know that magnesium is one of the most reactive element metallic element i would say you know, it's very very reactive element you know but you also would know that magnesium structural you know as a structure kept in atmosphere it has less corrosion rate compared to steel okay magnesium alloys have lower atmospheric corrosion rates compared to steel in many cases very very severe cases we are not talking about it how is it possible because magnesium alloy forms a very strong oxide on the metal surface better than what steel can form and so they are better than that so thermodynamics says magnesiums are going to corrode more but the kinetics i mean help to reduce the corrosion effect 
that means we are all talking about understanding the kinetics of erythropoietic corrosion. So that is a very important thing in, in all our research we are talking about. Now, when you are talking about these corrosion studies, you know, different people have different reasons to study, right? In the industry, people talk about corrosion testing, evaluation, and monitoring. Even then, the electrochemistry is very important. They do that. The persons who develop a high corrosion resistant materials, for them also, electrochemical techniques are very important. This is all our development. People who look at coatings, metallic coatings. Or paint coatings, electrochemical techniques are equally important, inhibitors. And even more important in my perspective is understanding the mechanism of dissolution of metals. The electrochemical techniques are important. So when we talk about electrochemical you know, technique studies, it encompasses, encompasses many aspects of it. And today we are going to be confining ourselves in relation to the alloy development. I'm going to focus on that. Okay, how the electrochemical techniques can be used to understand the mechanism, okay, of and whenever you develop an alloy, how do you understand it? That's the focus of my work, my, my talk today. So, when we talk about alloy development, all we probably will understand is that the corrosion occurs because there is material, mostly metals, in the earth. And interacts with the environment. Mostly, we talk about aqueous environment, as we talked about. And of course, when you talk about industrial structures, industrial structures are, you know, they are not freely, uh, you know, exposed and you know, freely designed. They are all subject to various type of uh, stresses and so on. Okay. And so these are the ways. So all of them contribute to corrosion process. They all can interact together and can make corrosion more severe. If you go in detail about it, right? Let's look at the material. Material has got several components. Chemistry of the material. What is the structure? Is it? I'm talking about crystal structure. That is FCC or SCP or face under cubic structures. You have microstructures because there are phases being evolved. You take a typical steel. Uh, you know, you talk about. You may have a ferrite. You may have a cementite phases. You can have a different kind of phases depending upon the alloy that they're both have. So they are all going to influence the corrosion behavior of the metal. So what are you trying to do in electrochemistry? We are trying to understand how the chemistry affects, stress structure affects, microstructure affects the corrosion process. But again, the corrosion of these you know, aspects, chemistry, stress structure, microstructure, are intertwined with the environment actually, right? To have the chemical species that are present in the environment, the pH, temperature, flow rate, there are several types of things that are going to be there. So, we are trying to look at complement all of them. You know, you can have multiple interactions, multiple variables how the corrosion really occurs. Uh, of course, one more thing that we are not going to be worried too much about right now is stresses and geometry because we are not worried because the role of stresses and geometry are of different type of failures. We call them as uh, stress corrosion tracking, post corrosion, so on and so forth. But that is as one more dimension to it. So we will not be dealing with this in this talk. So what I am trying to look at is that our aerodynamic studies should be able to answer the relation between, you know, material that we talk about one, chemical, structural, microstructural to the environment that we deal with in its in, 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 in own aspect like chemistry, physics, temperature and so on and so forth, even flow for example. So these are the way that we should be analyzing when you talk about the electrochemical studies of uh, corrosion of metals. Now, coming to this, uh, we always start with thermodynamics. We just gave a glimpse of it earlier, uh, you know, the, the Purga diagram. We talk about thermodynamics, first of all. And again, you look at kinetics. See, both are inseparable when you start about understanding the metals. Even though the kinetics are real issues in terms of cardinal application, you can't separate out both of them at all. You have to put them together. Your voice is not clear? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, what we look at here is we have to look at the two aspects of it the thermodynamics and the kinetics. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just only illustrate, you know, as I told you, there's no way it's possible to cover this um, in about an hour or so 
in uh, typically our our course will take about 13 hours of lectures on thermodynamics and kinetics of corrosion so i'm going to give only broad outline as to what you should look for uh, in in studying the uh, corrosion of metals <clears throat> now when we talk about corrosion of, of metal we also we just discussed that there are uh, oxidation and reduction process happening you have a metal metal comes in contact with the environment now and there is a release of electrons by the metal and then uh, it goes to the solution and what happens now now these electrons are picked up by some species coming from the from the, from the environment now so now what you see here is when you talk about kinetics we talk about kinetics of oxidation we talk about the kinetics of reduction process okay now kinetics of oxidation uh, you know uh, uh, of course this, this is majorly concerned with the metal but however the environment also can influence we'll see that later actually okay and similarly the reduction of the metal is majorly influenced by the chemistry of the environment but also you will also see that metal also will take part in both cases there is always you know it's not just only one aspect of it the reduction of the metal will depend not only on the metal but also on the environment similarly uh, you know oxidation of this both both are, are interrelated you can't just uh, separate them now one of the most important thing that you should know as as a students i think i am addressing to students mostly actually the students is that you should start with always with, with the nurse the nurse equation it talks about the equilibria of of uh, of electrochemical system what i shown here is a zinc metal immersed in zinc ions it establishes an equilibrium potential depending upon what depending upon the activity of the ions here okay it's a very nice guy i think you know he, he got a nobel prize of course not just for the um, this uh, nurse equation for the thermochemistry got a nobel prize for that and uh, you know you know the relation between the free energy change the potentials and again uh, you know this potential related to non situation okay i am just only illustrating i am just trying to point out that this is the origin of the thermodynamics of of electrochemistry in this <clears throat> now this nernst equation is can be extrapolated here and then you know i mean expanded here and then you can always find out what is the equilibrium potential now the equilibrium potential is one of the most important thing that you should always know when we deal with the electrochemical studies because i've seen cases where people say that is hydrogen evolution i've seen papers reporting that is hydrogen evolution taking place at the corrosion potential right but if you look at the corrosion potential the corrosion potential of the metal is far positive compared to this it's simply not possible that is corrosion but then corrosion is not due to hydrogen evolution the corrosion is due to oxygen reduction process so when you're talking about the corrosion potentials ecar and whether the corrosion is occurring due to hydrogen or not it is possible that you make some calculation it is very important you do this many times i don't i don't see people doing this at all so you could never forget the nernst equation even though when you are talking about electrochemical kinetics because what reaction is is driving the corrosion process that again is dictated by the thermodynamics so thermodynamics becomes very important now again as i have been talking to you whether the, the rate of corrosion is is determined by the environment as much as by the metal right why is that is by the environment now just look at the diagram the school bay diagram is for zinc and water system okay now we see this potential versus the ph now in this domain metal does not really corrode 